Applying DNA analysis to human identification is the principal mission of the biology unit. The forensic biologists routinely assist investigators by developing unique genetic information that identifies a particular individual and may connect that person with a criminal activity. The accuracy with which DNA analysis provides identification make it one of the most important tools of modern investigation. Two types of DNA are associated with humans, nuclear and mitochondrial. Our focus in this presentation is on nuclear DNA, which is located in the nucleus of cells. Nuclear DNA is packaged in 23 discrete pairs of chromosomes. They contain the genetic blueprint of each individual. Only identical twins have identical DNA signatures. There are three basic steps for any forensic biology analysis. Evaluation of bulk evidence and isolation of potential biological evidence. Identification of the suspected biological substance and its species origin, meaning is it human, animal, or bacterial. And finally, developing DNA-based genetic profiles from human biological evidence. These steps are controlled by a rigorous protocol within the laboratory to prevent contamination of evidence during analysis. In the first step, the biology scientist uses knowledge and experience to examine items coming from the crime scene for potential evidence and collects remnants of biological material. Microscopes may be employed in this examination process, or the use of alternative light source as another technique to locate and isolate this evidence. Next, chemical and emiological tests are used to identify the type and source of a suspect stain to determine if it's human or animal or bacterial. If the biological stain is determined to be human, then genetic analysis using DNA technology is performed. DNA analysis begins with the isolation of the DNA molecule. A solution of chemicals is added to the biological material which break open the cells releasing the DNA. Additional chemicals are then added to separate the DNA from proteins and other cellular material. The condition and quantity of the isolated DNA are evaluated using visualization techniques. The condition of the DNA is determined by using a yield gel apparatus. This procedure determines if the DNA has begun to degrade. The quantity of the DNA molecule recovered is estimated by using a slot blot procedure. A sample of the extracted DNA is chemically attached to a membrane that has been soaked in a solution containing a chemiluminescent DNA probe. The membrane is taken to a dark room and combined with a piece of special film. The chemiluminescent label acts like a flashlight shining on the human DNA, which glows and exposes the piece of film. The intensity of this reaction is compared to known standards, which determines the amount of DNA isolated from the evidence stain. The next step is to take a specific amount of the isolated human DNA, mix it with chemicals, and put it into an instrument called a thermocycler. The thermocycler is the molecular equivalent of the paper copy machine. Using a process called the polymerase chain reaction, PCR, the thermocycler generates literally thousands of copies of specific areas of the DNA molecule. The copies produced are referred to as the PCR product. The locations of the copied DNA molecule are polymorphic, which means they are highly variable between individuals. Using this variation, the scientist develops a genetic signature known as the DNA profile. An instrument called a genetic analyzer is used to evaluate the PCR product and develop the profile. Finally, the DNA profile that has been developed from the evidence is compared to the samples of known DNA profiles. These samples may have been collected from victims, alleged suspects, family members, or acquaintances. The result either excludes the individual 
or provides a highly unique association with the evidence. The second major responsibility of the biology unit is the maintenance of the combined DNA index system, referred to as CODIS. CODIS is a DNA database in which DNA profiles are maintained. The perpetrator of a crime may be unknown, but it is often the case that the suspect has been involved with the law on other occasions. Michigan law requires that DNA profiles be developed on all convicted felons. These profiles are stored in the Michigan CODIS that is a member of the National CODIS system administered by the FBI. In addition, DNA profiles developed from the forensic evidence and from missing persons are housed in the database. DNA profiles developed from the crime scene evidence are entered into the CODIS system and searched against the convicted felon database. In addition, the database software compares the evidence profiles to one another, aiding in the identification of serial type crimes. Relying on the basic tenet of forensic science that every contact results in a transfer, Locard's principle, it is very likely that biological evidence will be transferred in the conduct of a crime. The work of the biology unit provides efficient and effective investigation, assuring that the innocent remains free and the guilty are identified.